so great to understand that what that we're going through is all supervised by Hashem because else if it would be our path, if it would be a result of our actions or whatever, it would be a disaster. We would blame ourselves so much, we would hate ourselves so much. Only when we know that the Creator, He is the one that is creating our reality, we can breathe. <laughs> if it was me that is doing things in my life, I would lose my mind for sure. I wouldn't hold on. Only the fact that I know that Hashem Barach is with me and He is guiding me, like that King David is saying, Atato mich gorali. And the Metsudot David is explaining the verse, Atato mich gorali. You were supporting my destiny to believe in you. Also, the faith that I have in you, it's something that you gave me. Moshe Rabbeinu said to Hashem, You turned their face away from you. It's not that they don't believe in you. You turned your face away. That's why they can't see you. If you will turn your face back to them, that's it. It's the end of the story. Now, I'm going to explain to you now what happened in Texas. Why people are so terrified from what that can happen in Florida and in South America. And why... People are so terrified from crazy prophecies before Rosh Hashanah, end of September, and all of craziness that people are going through in their lives. Why all of those judgments are coming right now? Because the, those are days of Elul, those are days of Shuvah. And we are so close to the end, if you will... Um, refresh your memory a little bit to look at last year on one year before the last three, four, five years every time before of Rosh Hashanah there were crazy, crazy judgments crazy judgments crazy situations and especially Hasid Breslev experienced those things before of Rosh Hashanah that Rabbeinu Rabbi Nachman said I received the Rosh Hashanah as a gift from Hashem in Barach, and he's in charge on Rosh Hashanah, and there is something very unique that happens every year in Uman in Rosh Hashanah, that Rabbeinu commanded and, and asked all of his loyal students, everyone that listens to him, to make it and to come to Rosh Hashanah, and Rabbeinu is building fantastic buildings with those holy souls that are coming, and something very special happens every year in Rosh Hashanah. So especially in the last five years, before of Rosh Hashanah, something like five years, we can see every month before of Rosh Hashanah that there are threats on our nation and on the wide world and, and Jewish communities in Houston, Texas. It's a very big Jewish community over there. And also in Florida, in, in, in South Florida, in, the, in Miami, very big, huge. Jewish community, and all of those judgments that Hashem Barach is putting on us, all of that threat, all of that fear, is coming only for one thing, to wake us up to do tshuva. Now, again, again, relax. <laughs> you need to understand again, over and over, what it means to do tshuva. To do tshuva, it's not to die. To do tshuva is not to suffer. To do tshuva is not to hang yourself from the ceiling. To do tshuva, it's not to not to sleep at night and to be awake all day long. It's, no, that's not tshuva. Those are other things. When you have a beard, so you are growing your beard. When you cover your head, so you have a head cover. Everything you do is amazing. Tshuva is one mitzvah out of 613 mitzvot. And a person needs to do tshuva in the days of Elul. So to do tshuva, it doesn't mean to put filin. You can put filin. It's not bad. You can keep Shabbat. It's not bad. It's great. Keep Shabbat. <laughs> but the month of Elul is the month of tshuva. You need to set your mind into doing tshuva. Now the question is, 
What is tshuva? Great, wonderful. Let's discuss that. Let's talk about the real meaning of Elul, of the month of tshuva. So, Rabbi Nachman and also other righteous people explained to us, they opened the word Elul. Elul, you write Aleph, Lamed, Vav, Lamed. In the holy language, you write Aleph and then Lamed, Vav and then Lamed. Great! So, two things I want to tell you about the month of Elul. First of all, the first interpretation, what the Rabbi Nachman and also other righteous people mentioned that in their books, in their amazing Torah that they said. They said to us that the month of Elul is representing the verse, Ani le dodi ve dodi li, that the nation of Israel is preparing itself to get married with her so-called uncle. It's not a real uncle, like a family member uncle. It means the one that she loves. That's how the old ancient language was using the word uncle to describe her, the one that she loves, the one that she yearns to get married with. So, first of all, that uncle is Hashem Barach, is the creator himself. And the holy nation is about to marry him. So the tshuva, that month of tshuva, receives now that light of love. Because we're talking about a wedding. So all of that connection of doing tshuva and coming closer to Hashem is through those glasses of building a relationship, communication, making peace, shalom bite between the couple, trying to have conversations. And that's how you do tshuva, based on the Rambam and Shulchan Aruch that are explaining to us how we should keep mitzvah tshuva, how we should come back to Hashem. The way to do it is through a second mitzvah that's called mitzvah tfila, the obligation to pray. How we're doing that, not by reading prayers of other people from books, just by opening our mouths and sharing and talking and telling and expressing our emotions and our needs and our will in front of the king of all kings. That is mitzvah tefillah. Now, that's prayer. We're using that power, that tool that God gave us to do tshuva with it. With that tool of prayer, you can praise Hashem. It's another mitzvah. You need to thank Hashem in Barach on everything that happens to you in life. Great, it's one obligation. Second obligation, you need to ask all of your needs. Another obligation that's included in the obligation of prayer. A third obligation, a third option how to use that tool that calls prayer is to do tshuva, to come back to Hashem. How you come back? First of all, where you should come back from. The place that you should come back from is a far place, right? You come back home. You don't come back to the desert. You come back to the place that you went out from. You went out from heaven and you need to go back to heaven. Where we came out from, we came out from heaven, right? When the Creator created the first man and Eve, He created them, those are us, in heaven. Now, we been exiled, rejected, sent away, excommunicated from heaven to the physical world, to where that we're stuck right now, today, in our days, in the dark exile. Great! One is in America, one is in Israel, one is in Iran, one is in Iraq, one is in Europe, one is everyone in Australia. Everyone is stuck somewhere on this planet, and that's his hell. That's his exile, right? Now you need to come back. Where are you going to come back to? Back to America? Back to the future? No. You need to come back to the earliest days. Chadesh Yamenu Kekedem. Please renew our days, that they will be like the earliest days, the ancient days, the days of before, means back to heaven. So the end of the process of tshuva, that means, the word tshuva means that you come back, that you receive an answer, means that you can 
understand the, the map, that you can understand what the, the hints are, and you're going to find the answer how to come back to Hashem, it's to come back to heaven. So when you complete your tshuva, you're not sad and depressed and broken and, and dead and done and finished and destroyed. No, that's not tshuva. That's something else. You're alive and you're happy and you're satisfied and you're full with joy and you live your life like you're in heaven because you feel heaven. That's the end of tshuva. So to everyone that thinks that what that he's doing is tshuva, first of all, check the results. <laughs> if the results brought you to sadness, to despair, to feel alone and separated and then demolished, so you were not doing tshuva. Maybe you did something else, but you were, not, you were not wasting your time. Maybe you did something else. But tshuva you didn't do. Because the end of the tshuva is tashuv, Hashem, that the letter Hey will come back to the person that came back. Tashuv, you will come back. Hey, hey, it's Hashem. Tashuv, Hashem, Hashem will come back to you. In the end of you, of your process of coming back to Hashem, Hashem will come back to you. Shuvu elai v'ashuva elechem. When you'll come back to me, I'll come back to you. So, the result of a real process of tshuva is that you and Hashem are one. Now, just by the sim most simple explanation of what does it mean that Hashem Barach is with you, like we said before, it means that it's heaven. That the spirit of Hashem is walking with Adam and Eve in the garden. Mithalech, He's walking with them. So Hashem is walking with you. That's the result of tshuva. When you do tshuva, you should come to that path, to that place that Hashem is walking with you. Now, what does it mean that Hashem is walking with you? That all of your prayers are being answered. That all of the salvations that you ask for, you just already received them faster than Amazon. A special <laughs> delivery faster than everything so you ever heard. Prime or just or prime. 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 Faster yeah. than a speeding bullet. Yeah. No problems. The fastest way that can be possible. Like that the verse is saying, Before you called, I'm going to answer. Before you ordered, you already received your ordering. Okay? Best customer service in the world. Hashem <laughs> is delivering the salvation. So that is the result of tshuva. Now, to those people that are so negative and their self-esteem is so low that they cannot believe that it's even an option for them to enjoy from such bounty, from such amazing success, really what? Whatever I'll want, I'll receive. To those people, Hashem in Barach made sure that they will also have a way to come back to Hashem. What is that way? To look at other Bale Tshuva, other people that did Tshuva and completed their Tshuva and became so holy that Hashem Barach was with them. Now, when you see a person that he born holy, like Moshe Rabbeinu, that the Torah is saying on Moshe, that when that baby Moshe came out to the world, so all the room was shining, from the light, he was illuminating, and he born circumcised, and he never had no sin, and he was holy from birth. Okay, so you see a role model like that, a person like that, I can understand why you feel that you cannot learn from him. You say, okay, look, Moshe, he was unique, I don't know. But when you look for an example on Abraham Avinu, a person that born non-Jew, he was one of the nations. He came from Aram. And he decided to seek for the Creator with his own wisdom. He realized that to idolize the sun is a mistake. And then he thought, maybe I'll idolize the moon. Maybe I'll worship the moon. And he realized that the moon doesn't work, doesn't achieve. You pray to the moon and you're not being answered. And he kept on investigating and checking until he came to the right answer. And then he found Hashem, and Hashem put him into tests. And it's written that 10 huge tests Abraham Avinu been 
Tested? In or on? In? On. On. With? With. Not in, not on. With. Great. We're learning. Depends. Depends who you ask. Depends, depends what you want to say. Okay, so I'll tell you what I wanted to say and then you, you'll remember to fix me in the future. No. No. You're not. Okay. So I'm going to continue with what I wanted to say. It's also great by me. So, from a person like that, the Hashem Barach answered his prayers and revealed himself to him from complete darkness. From a person like that, we can learn. But you can also say, but look, can you compare me in this generation? I'm so disturbed. I'm so all over the place. How can you compare me to the holy ancestors, the soul of Abraham Avinu, the soul of Yitzchak? How can you compare between me and him? It's not the same league. It's not the same level at all. Okay, great. I understand you also on that. So that's why the righteous people kept on writing books with testaments and testimonies about other people that were doing tshuva. You can read it in the Gemarot, in the Talmud. You can read it in the Midrashim. And you can also read it from stories like the Baal Shem Tov, and Rabbi Levi Yitzchak Miberdichov, and Rabbi Nachman of Breslev, and the, all the Rebbes of Chabad, and all the rest of righteous people have stories on people that came back from the darkness of exile and became righteous as well. So now, if you're going to disqualify every one of them, or just yourself, mark yourself with a red axe, me, I'm not, a, I'm not in that league, I'm not in that level. So you just, the truth is that you just gave up on yourself. Because it cannot be that thousands of people along the years, in those thousands of years of exile, made their way back home and achieved it and succeeded. And their prayers been answered, and they saw miracles and salvations, and they became righteous like the greatest ones of all generations. And you cannot do that. So that is the secret of tshuva, that you're going to start believe in yourself. That you're going to understand that you can become righteous, exactly like our ancestors. I gave that example in many of my classes. From an apple tree, you will never going to pick mandarins. No way. Only apples, always, only apples. So if you are from that plant, from that holy tree of life, of Avraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, or if you join that tree in all of the ways that you can join as a branch to that tree, that you love that tree, that you appreciate that tree, that you care about that tree, that you support that tree, that you convert it and you join Judaism and now you became Jewish as a convert or whatever. There are many ways to join that tree. You saved the life of a Jewish person. You just have a Jewish friend and you love him and you believe in the Torah that's been given to our nation. If you just believe that we've been chosen by Hashem, not because of our greatness, because of His mercy. He chose us and He hand to us the Bible, the Torah. He decided to do that. You're already part of us. You're already part of this amazing tree. So, if you understand that you are part of that amazing tree that makes fruits, so you became to be an apple and you will never going to be a mandarin. Because from an apple tree, only apples will grow. So you need to understand that if you don't feel yourself as Sarai Menu, or as Rivka, or as Rachel, or as Leah, it's only because you don't see, you don't look, you don't realize who you really are. And you're stuck in that pill, in those coverings that are wrapping you, that that is the power of imagination that is rejecting you from understanding the real purpose of your life, how close you are to the Creator. You just don't get it. That's the only thing here. You don't get where you are. You just don't, you haven't figured it all out yet. You don't get, you don't understand. That's the only problem. And it's not that you're not there. You're there. You're just not aware to who that you are. You're too busy listening to the nonsense of the evil inclination that is speaking to you on speakers 
that are wireless inside of your ears and telling you, but you're ugly, but you're disgusting, but you're stupid, but look how many times you forget. Oh, you failed again. You don't have no chance. You don't have no hope. Hashem hates you. Hashem doesn't listen to your prayers. Look how rejected you are. Oh, you failed again. Now Hashem is angry at you. Now Hashem is disappointed from you. You don't have a share in the world to come. All of those whispers of the snake are just nonsense. They're not the truth. The snake, he was lying from the first day of his creation. That's his job. He's lying. And he got only one permission to lie. That's his job. He's crawling within his, in his sneaky way and whispering. That's what he's doing. That's his only ability. That's his job on earth. He's crawling and whispering and lying and talking, evil, evil speeches, words, negative words against the right path, against the right way of the Creator. And the snake is talking Lashonara, bad words to you into your ears. And the test that you're standing in is only if to listen to him and to follow his sneaky advice or to follow the advice of Hashem. Now, what's our problem? That many, many people will tell you, listen, I'll give you the advice of Hashem. And they, the truth is, that they also fell into the trap of the snake, into the trap of the evil inclination. So, it's a loop. It's a problem. You choose to follow Hashem because you want to, and then you find yourself following people that are not really able to lead you to Hashem. Why? Because they also fell in that net of being trapped in the advice of the snake. Even if it seems sometimes that they're holy, that they are important, that they are amazing, but you don't know, maybe 3% they're still in the darkness. So they will be able to save only 97 out of every 100. And they're amazing because it's amazing to reach 97% of purity. It's huge. But maybe you fell in that gap of the 3%. So now you're done. You're out. So they were not the right leaders for you to follow. And their names can be fascinating. They can be the authors of such holy books and amazing, amazing people that people are inspired by. And from a good reason. But you fell in that gap. You fell in that dark crack. And you cannot find your way out. And there are many, many stories on righteous people that were not able to save 100% of their people, of their followers, and many, many people lost along the way. So, it doesn't mean that those people that you try to learn from them are not righteous, are not holy. We're, no, we're not saying that at all. We're just saying that for you, their answer was not the right answer. So you need to keep on looking for the right answer. How are you going to know what the right answer is? Like we said before, the end of the tshuva is to be one with Hashem, is to come back to Hashem. It means happiness. You need to be happy. So if you still have not found happiness, means that you still have not found the right advice that will answer your question. Great. Now at least we know what the problem is. After you know what the problem is, you can look for the solution. Before you thought that you have huge problems, that you kept, someone called me today and told me, listen, I kept all of the advice of that book that are written in that book. So then come on, you're making a joke out of me or yourself. What are you talking about? He said, yes, really. I learned that book more than 30 times. I was praying on every chapter, every paragraph. I was praying and I tried and I did. And I, I told him, so what? I don't say that you didn't try to keep all of the advice. But can you be so sure that you really kept all of the advice that are written in that book? What are you talking about? There is such advice in books that the author, the one, the righteous man that wrote those advice, he was aiming so high that even if you're going to sweat for 500 years, you won't understand what he was thinking about at all. So well, how can you even imagine that you really kept all of the advice? That You can say, I tried. You can say, look, I put all of my, my, my guts on the table for that. But to say I achieved it? I don't know if you, you're in that level. So... And then, when you think that you did, when you think that you tried so much, and you have 
a reason to be disappointed and to be frustrated. Oh, but I tried. The Gemara is saying that if I'll give 10% of my income to charity, I'll be rich. And here I gave so many times and for years I'm giving 10%, 10%, nothing. I only lose 10% every month. I don't, except of those 10% that I see them going, I don't see anything different. I don't see anything else. Okay, so that's a question. What are you going to do with that question? You need to find someone that give you the advice on that question. It's not hard. The only issue is that when you find yourself stuck, don't be disappointed from the Torah or from Hashem. Understand that maybe you have not found yet the answer to your question. Maybe you still need to look for the right advice that will fit for you. Like the, the Torah is saying, Chanoch Lanar al Pidarko. You need to educate the child by his way, according to his abilities. You need to listen to him. You need to be sensitive to him. So you, as a child that is seeking for Hashem, that wants to do tshuva, that wants to come back, you need to have an open ear to yourself. Because if there are certain things in the world of religion that are too hard for you, and when you check yourself, you see that those things that you're trying to keep are kicking you in the face over and over, pushing you, knocking you out down to the ground again and again, over and over. So something is wrong. So don't blame Hashem. Don't blame the Torah. Check what is wrong with you. What is still not working in your system? Why you're not able to keep that mitzvah? For an example, many people will tell you that so many things depend on the fact that you will wake up before of dawn. Yes, it's a great, amazing quality, amazing thing that a person wakes up before of dawn, that he will wake up the day and not that the day will wake him up, the heat of, of 10 a.m. will wake him up. No, it's much better to wake up before of sunrise, before of dawn, to prepare yourself to the prayer. Great, but the person can try that once and twice and 100 times and he finds himself over and over getting dizzy and headaches and, and, and tired and cannot focus all day long. So don't blame Hashem on writing a halakha, a rule that will be so hard to keep. And don't be upset on the Torah that it doesn't fit to you. Try to understand what can you do to make it possible. So now, okay, I want to wake up every morning at 4 a.m., but it's too hard for me as for now. I have a list of at least 20 things that I want to change, that I need to change, and if I'll change them, I think, I hope, that I will be able to wake up at 4 a.m. But part of those 20 things that I need to change in my life are not depends only on me and in my will. So it's impossible for me to do that. Let's say that I need to be home at 7. That I need to go to sleep only after 10, so I don't have enough hours to sleep, or something like that. That I have children, that I'm married, that my wife, she's got her needs, that I have a company, that I have a job, that I have other obligations. Okay, great. So if you cannot keep those things, if you cannot change those 20 things, that in them it depends if you're going to wake up at 4 a.m. or not, so why to blame yourself on not waking up? at 4 a.m. If for you, really, after checking and trying and putting all of your effort to succeed, you realize that for you, as for now, or at least for the next couple of years, it's not an option, why to blame yourself on that? So you need to be understanding about yourself. You need to realize that it's okay for a person like you, in your condition, with your family, in your financial situation, with the limitations and, and heaviness of your own body, after all you went through with the scars and the emotional scars that you're carrying with you from your childhood, that it will be okay for you to wake up at 8 or at 9 or at 11.45. I don't know which condition and from which meeting of AA you're coming out from. And it's okay. Because if life brought you to that situation that you are now dealing with horrible habits and rehab, 
You cannot function like a normal person. And it's okay. And the fact that you are not as normal as other people that think that they are normal, that's nonsense. It's not something wrong with you. The fact that you are waking up every day at 11.45 and you're dragging yourself out of bed and you're washing your hands and at 5 p.m. you're putting tefillin every day, that's fantastic. If you don't believe in that, so you don't have no connection to Hashem. You don't understand the will of Hashem and the emotions of Hashem and the, 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 the feel of Hashem and the will of Hashem at all. You're just 100% disconnected. Really, a person that is 100% connected to Hashem in Barach, he realized, he is realizing that kol me'orotav em letovato. That everything that you go through in life is for your own good. Also, the fact that you woke up at 11.45, that you cannot catch a minyan, that there is no shul in your area, in your town, no synagogue at all, that you don't have a clue on which arm to put the tefillin, and you have only one pair, and you're not sure that it's kosher. Everything that you go through in life is handmade by the Creator, and He knows exactly why and how and what the only problem that you have in life is that you're not one with Him in His will. That you're not understanding His intention in sending you to that darkness in Kansas. That you don't understand why now you need to take and look for your stuff back after the horrible hurricane in, in, in Texas, in Houston. That you cannot grab, you cannot understand. Okay. But like I said before, don't be angry at Hashem, and don't be angry at the Torah, and don't be angry at yourself. Just try to understand what is your real life mission, building yourself now from zero, recovering from five years of, of crack and heroin. It doesn't matter. A person that is sitting 20 years in prison after killing someone in a gang fight, also need to reconnect himself to the Creator, no matter what he went through and who he killed and which kind of damage he made, even on his own, even with his bare hands, because there is always hope. There is always a plan. The Creator sent you to do something, not something bad, now to deal with your situation, that humiliation that you're going through. The fact that you found yourself, that you killed someone, that you violated so many Shabbos, that you didn't eat kosher all of your life, you're just, you're the, the, the biggest fan of, of, of shrimps and, 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 and lobsters. <laughs> Whatever! You need to come back, that's your mission. That's your mission. I once saw a, a television show on, on, on crazy chefs, on people that are cooking, making food, you see how much desire and lust they have in their mouths? You can't understand it. How much satisfaction they're receiving from a piece of, 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 of garbage. Like, what's that? Who cares? And there, hmm, and ah, and ah, and wow, and yo, and show, and you can't, what happened? You just you swallow already. What's going on with you? Move on in life. No, and they will have 80 million people rating, watching their shows. And What? People fell to horrible darknesses, to horrible places. People are following after their eyes, looking at women, like who knows what you can find over there. After food, after money, after honor, after respect, after whatever. And people are falling also in what that looks, what that seems like the borders of Torah. He wants to be righteous and he will follow that desire to be a rabbi and to be known and recognized and to write books and novels. And and it's all nonsense. It's all just your craziness that you're trying to become something. And instead of just connecting yourself to your real being, to who the Hashem wants you to be. For an example, you're a husband of your wife. You're the father of your children. You need to make a living. You, you need to, to throw the garbage once a day. It's part of your mission and you must realize that. You must understand it. 
must accept it as part of your mission. But people think, no, if I'm going to learn more Torah, so then Hashem will give me a reward in the world to come. You think that Hashem Barach is a business? You think that Hashem Barach is, is your boss? You think that Hashem Barach, you're going to make Hashem rich by keeping more mitzvot, you're bringing back the sparks back home, and you're going to make Hashem wealthy? You think Hashem needs you for something? Make the money for Hashem, Hashem is saying. You put a mezuzah on your, on your door, and you're so proud of yourself, and Hashem is saying, but I gave you your house. That you're going to be so proud in your mezuzah. I gave you everything. No, he's married to someone and he's so proud. He's got money driving a fancy car and he's so proud of himself. Hashem gave you everything. Hashem lets you breathe. Hashem gives you the power to breathe. Hashem gives you the wisdom to survive, to hold on, to be healthy, to put another piece of food into your mouth that you will stay sane and calm and relax. He supports you. He gives you solid ground under your feet. So many things. And just to realize that, to come back to the will of Hashem, that's the mission and that's the purpose of tshuva. And how now we will be practical. How you really, and I owe you another explanation, don't forget, on the word Elul. Baruch Hashem, that Hashem mazkir nishkachot, that He reminds us all the things that we forget. The secret of tshuva, first of all, how are you going to keep it? How really a person should do tshuva? So, if you found yourself in a situation that you went far from Hashem, like we said before, what it means close to Hashem? That you're happy, that you're with Hashem, that you're cool, that you're relaxed, that you're calm, that you have everything you need. Now, in every aspect that you feel emptiness, darkness, fears, stress, anger, sadness, all kinds of emotions and feelings and negative thoughts that makes you feel rejected from Hashem, far from the blessing of Hashem, not under the umbrella or the wings of Hashem. From that place you need to do tshuva. From that place you need to come back to Hashem. So if you found yourself eating like an animal, if you find yourself sleeping like an animal, if you find yourself driving like an animal, if you find yourself thinking like an animal, if you found yourself far from the Creator, means that He was not part of your thoughts. He was not part of your life in your feeling. Not that He really was not there. He was there, but your mind was distracted. If you found yourself distracted from the thoughts of Hashem, from the positivity, from the hope, from the happiness, from the purity, from the inspiration, from the love, from the unity, whatever that Hashem represents from, for you, if you found yourself far from that, on that you need to do tshuva. From that dark place you need to come back to Hashem. How are you going to do that? Practical advice. You just need to express your sorrow and your feeling, your regret about that moment in front of Hashem and to ask from Hashem to bring you back that next time you won't drive like a crazy driver, you won't eat like an animal, you won't sleep like the cattle that are sleeping on the ground like, like stone. No, you will be relaxed and calm, and aware, and healthy in your mind, and satisfied, and strong, and powerful, and focused, and happy, and proud. That's how you're going to be. So, to express your sorrow, for an example, you found yourself eating not in a proper way. You find that food spilt on your clothing, that you were eating too much. Now, after eating you realize that I forgot to say the blessing, the bracha, or that you found yourself too heavy now and you just want to go to sleep. Whatever that you felt that that way of eating was not the proper way for you, for a human being to eat. So you need to express it to Hashem. How you do that, like we said before, you use the tool of tshuva, of prayer. You pray. You tell Hashem, Father in heaven, the Creator, Hashem, who in any way that you want to call Him, God, my Lord, in every way that you feel, call Him and tell Him, listen, I feel sorrow. I was eating like an animal. It's not right. I felt bad after it. 
I wanted to go and to pray, and because that I was eating, so I was so tired, and I went to sleep without davening, praying my reef. I was not <clears throat> praying the evening prayer. Or something else, I, 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 I felt my, my, my shirt, and, I'm, and I felt bad. Why I need to eat like that? I was not careful enough in the way that I was eating. I was eating without blessing, Hashem. I was so hungry. I had such a desire for the food that I forgot to wash my hands before of it. And I ate without a blessing. Whatever really you went through, just express it. Say to Hashem in your own words, Hashem, I'm sorry. I was eating not in the right way. I was doing something not appropriate. I said it once in a class. That something that really woke me up once. We were sitting and dining, me and my wife and, 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 and my family, my children, and we were eating. And every one of the children got his dish. Everyone ate what did we put for them in the plate. There was enough for everyone to eat. But then, after I ate, I was still hungry. At least I felt hungry. And then I ate another piece of chicken that was in that plate in that evening. And my children are here with us. Hearing my tshuva in public, no problem, part of my tshuva. <laughs> and we were sitting and eating, and I was eating that other piece of chicken that was there on the main plate. And after that, I ate it. Also, my children, they were still hungry. And I felt horrible with myself. I felt like I was eating my children's food. And it can happen to every person. And it's not that something wrong happened, and it's not that something horrible happened. They ate, and they're fat, and they're nice, and they're full and satisfied, and don't worry, everything is great with them. But still, when I felt myself, when I was aware to my own thoughts, I was wrong. I was eating out of my hunger without paying enough attention to my children to the fact that they might also, even though that this piece of chicken was not enough even for everyone for a second dish, and everyone always wants more. But still, I, when I checked myself, I felt wrong with myself. So what can a person do? Kill yourself. Hate yourself. Blame yourself for the rest of your life. No. Try to learn how to control yourself. And first step is to do tshuva. It's to come back to Hashem. To tell Hashem, Hashem, listen. Is it too late now to say sorry? <laughs> That's how you start your tshuva process. You just say to Hashem, I'm apologizing. I'm sorry. I was wrong. I was too distracted by the smell, by the whatever that I went through in that day. I was probably sad or depressed or confused, trying to satisfy myself with that substitute for happiness that caused food. And I was wrong. So please, Hashem, help me that it's never going to happen to me again, that I will never going to eat more than I need, that I will always be aware to the ones that are eating with me, and that's it. And now drop that case. Remove it off your back. Because if you're now going to keep on blaming yourself after doing tshuva, you're in the trap of the snake of the evil inclination and he's playing soccer with your heart, with your mind, and he's just kicking you all over the field. And you're 100% wrong. The truth is that the tshuva is the solution that the Creator gave us to fix all sins. And tshuva is useful for all kinds of crimes and sins. And that's the solution. Before of Judgment Day that is happening to us in the day of Rosh Hashanah, the first day of the Jewish calendar, there is only one advice, do tshuva. Why? Because that's the only solution. That's it. Now, if you don't believe in that, so great. So you follow Christianity, Islam, faith in, in, in Shiva, Ganesh. I don't know what you're doing, who you're idolizing. You're not following the truth of the Holy Bible that been given to us from Hashem, by Moshe Rabbeinu, through the rest of the righteous people, during all the generations until today. If you don't understand the power of tshuva, you don't understand the will of Hashem, you don't understand the power of Hashem, you don't understand the mercy of Hashem, you don't understand the meaning of to be close to Hashem, 
And the real intention of Hashem that it's to reveal His mercy. To reveal His mercy is to help people that are not worthy to, 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 to receive those mercy. To give mercy and love to someone that is not worthy. And that's Hashem. He gives to everyone a second chance. And the beginning of that process is that you will give yourself a chance. That you will let yourself do a real tshuva. A real tshuva. So all of those judgments and all of those fears that we're experiencing and all of the difficulties and all kinds of constrictions that we're going through in our life are coming to wake us up only for one thing, that we will come from that darkness that we're experiencing to come back to Hashem. How you come back to Hashem? Talking about your situation with Him and asking for help. That's it. And after you did it, you need to take that issue that you were discussing and give it to recycle. Throw it with the garbage. They're going to pick it in Monday or Thursday. If it's recycled, it will be on Wednesday. And you're done. And you finish. You finish your tshuva process. You're happy. You're calm. You relax. Hashem is with you. And now you don't need to be worried. And how are you going to know that your tshuva is completed? If you're happy. That's it. And if you're still sad, ask Hashem Barach, what else I need to fix? And he will bring something up in your mind. And then do tshuva on that. Not kill yourself on that. Do tshuva on that. How you do tshuva? You talk about that problem that just came into your mind with Hashem and ask for help. Again, look how fast you forget. Immediately when I'm telling, now after this long explanation, I'm telling you do tshuva. And again, you're falling to that loop falling to your depression, to your sadness. Again, check yourself. I'm telling you, I know it. Even though that I'm telling you, do tshuva, and I explained it to you now for 40 minutes, for half an hour, that it's the most easiest process in the world, that it's kind of fun even. It's like just flow with your emotions. Just be who that you are. Express yourself. What can be better than that? And again, when I'm telling you, do tshuva, again... No, <laughs> don't go off. Don't let the evil inclination shut you down again. You are not far from completing your tshuva. When you're going to really understand the meaning of tshuva, you and Hashem are going to be one. means that your mind will understand what in the world you're going through. And then you're going to understand that you were suffering for no reason. And the real reason for your sorrow was your misunderstanding. That you were just lack of knowledge, of understanding God's will. Look, Hashem Barach made you short. He made me tall. He made him fat. He made me myself. You can see for long distance. I had to make a laser surgery to fix my eyes that I'll be able to see like that you can see today. Someone is bald like me. Someone else got long hair. One, his chest, his nose is... No, doesn't have no hair. One got like a monkey. So <laughs> what can you do? Hashem made you in a certain way and you cannot change it. People cannot understand that small thing that means that Hashem, Barach, He created you as you are and for a purpose. There is a precise reason for you to be short, for you to be skinny, for you that people will think that you're ugly, and for you to people to think that you're amazing. And they can think that you're amazing, and you know about yourself that you are a disgusting person. And you know it. And you know it about yourself, that you're disgusting, that you're selfish, that you're dumb, that you're lost, that you're confused, that you hate yourself, that you blame yourself. And people will praise you and respect you and honor you. And you look at yourself and you're a piece of junk. And you know you wake up with the smell of junk and you go to sleep with the smell of junk. And you know yourself. You know who you are. No one can fool you with who that you are. 
And people will love you and will want to kiss you and to touch you and to be all around you. And you see, you, you stink. Yeah. You say that you stink, that you're disgusting. You know it. No? It's simple. It's reality. So who cares what other people think? You're on a mission. And you need to use the fact that no one can see you or that everyone are looking at you, that everyone wants to listen to you or that no one ever listens to what that you have to say. You can use those gifts of Hashem if you're just going to open your mind to understand what is your real life purpose. If you're a random person that is able to sneak into places and that no one will notice that you went in, you have something to do with that ability. Not to steal from Sephora. No. <laughs> something else. <laughs> Think about something else, please. <laughs> Think about something else, Libra <laughs> Nasha. I need a small line, sorry. <laughs> Use the gifts that God gave you. If you're so amazing and so attractive and people like running into you like a magnet, okay, so great, use it to serve Hashem with it. And don't think that you're so successful. No, you're nothing. You just Hashem made you. Hashem can change your nature in a day that everyone will hate you, even if you were a supermodel one week ago. Hashem can do whatever He wants with every person in every second. And if you're a person that is disappearing from the eyes of the world, who knows? how much your prayers are powerful, and how many people can connect themselves to you just because of the fact that they will feel that you and them have something in common, and maybe there are millions of people that will follow you and will connect you just because of the fact that you don't look so good in the eyes of other people. Who knows? It's not important. When you're going to understand what is your life mission, what is your life task, you will understand that the Shemit Barach is so great, that the Creator is so wise, and He knows exactly why He colored your skin in this color, and colored your hair in that color, and designed your nose like that, and your shoulders like that, and your hips like that, and made you to be exactly who that you are, with the education, and your life experience and wisdom, and your emotional scars, and the horrible traumas that you carry on yourself, and whatever you went through, all kinds of hell that you went through in life. Whatever you went through in life is what that God gave you to complete your mission. And you just need to understand that God is here, that God He knows that He created you not only in the past, He is creating you now in the present. He is Bore Olam. He is the creator of the world right now with us. He is creating the world. And now, Baruch Mazkir Nishkachot, I'm going to explain to you the second thing that I wanted to tell you about the month of Elul. So, Except of that explanation and interpretation of the word Elul, Aleph, Lamed, Vav, and Lamed, that it's the first letters of the verse, Ani ledodi vedodili, that our connection to the Creator is a connection that's based on love, that in the end of that process in Rosh Hashanah, we're getting married with Hashem, we're coming to be one. After completing our tshuva, you become one with Hashem. Except of that amazing short explanation, we have another explanation. When it's written Elul, you can divide the word Elul to two parts. So the first part is Aleph and Lamed. It's the word Kel, El, that it's one of the names of God. And you have Lamed, Vav and Lamed. It's and learn. Ve Lemad. You should learn. So the word Kel, El, Aleph and Lamed means chesed, means kindness. So the kindness of Hashem that is revealed in that month of Elul is to tell you and learn. That's what I want from you, that you're going to learn. That's the kindness of Hashem. That whatever we went through in life is bringing us to that place that we will learn from our life experience, from what that we went through that we will learn how to come closer to Hashem, how to be humble, 
how to be nice, how to be kind, how to care about each other, how to love each other, how to support each other, how to care about each other, how that I need to deal now with this situation that this wonderful person just came into the room exactly in the moment that I finished my class and now I will want to give a whole new lecture just for me and I can't do it. So I'm sorry. Is it too late now to say sorry? <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. In this world, in this period of time, we have a mission. What's the mission? The mission is only not to forget the Creator, to remember that it's all He, never to fall in the trap of all of those coverings, of all of those husks. husks.